Welcome to Literary Gumbo, a continuing look at the world of writers, writing, publishing, and all other peripheral events. Uh, my name is Fred Klein. I'm sort of the chief stirrer today, and my guest is somebody who has been, I felt was quite quiet and reserved, but I no longer think so because he's done a couple of projects that you would never believe. But let's welcome him anyhow, uh, Armando Nieto. Welcome, Armando. Thanks, Fred. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, we've bumped into each other along the way for a number of years. And you have accomplished something that is absolutely phenomenal, you and a couple of other, uh, another of you, uh, your, your cohorts. But I want to talk about you first. Okay. You and your life and how you got to Santa Barbara and how you got to ultimately the Writers' Conference, which is what we'll talk about. Sure. Well, let's see. The GP version of how I got to Santa Barbara is I came in 1969 um, to go attend UCSB. Oh, so you went to the US, UCSB? I, was, I started at UCSB, but of course... They kicked you out. No, the next year we burned down the Bank of America. <laughs> oh, well, so that was things that got very yes, exciting. That was right. um, the height of it. But I had my first brush, um, you know, with the literary world um, when um, some good friends of mine got me involved with the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions, Robert Hutchins. Oh, the Hutch were you part of that I was part whole of that. Hutchins yeah. thing? So I started off back then and of course I felt like I had died and gone to Mount Olympus and I was in Athens. Yes. It, was, it was a fantastic experience. Um, Has anybody done anything on that in recent years? Not recently. Um, I think, I think Harry Ashmore was the crossover. I loved him and I saw the, you got a shot of Harry in the book, yeah, which I was so and I, thrilled to I see. I put that in there because yeah, I used great. to sit and drink martinis with Harry at the yeah. old Miramar bar and talk about the old days at the center and where everybody was. And, um, but that, but, but all the brains, the big brains that was incredible. came here, right? It was a whole, a whole point. Right, right. And I was humbled, of course. Um, but then, you know, many, a couple of decades of political activism. Um, Santa Barbara eventually... Um, became executive director at the um, Environmental Defense Center. Okay. I was here in town during the oil wars and the land wars and things. Uh, and then I, I was in um, CEO and executive director of a think tank in, in San Francisco, in Boston, and I did work. I was on the board of Earth Share Federation in D.C. So most recently... I, wait, 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 wait. I'm suddenly... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, um, of, of um, telethons. Do I see a telethon in your background? Along the way. So, so I was going to say, so while I was hopscotching the country doing political work and social justice work, two things that I kept um, close to my heart. One was working with Mary Conrad at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference. Okay. Um, Barney and Mary became my adoptive parents way back um, in the early 80s and then in 1989 when I got sober. <laughs> uh, Barney wrote that famous book at the Betty Ford Center. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, ever since that that time, um, I've been Mary Conrad's partner. So I was always part of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference. The other thing I did was um, I um, hooked up with Kenny Loggins and Barbara Tullifson at the Unity Shop, and I, every year with Don Kadich, um, we'd produce and run the Unity Telethon. The Telethon, I still think, is one of the great ways of raising money. It is, and the relationships, and of course the crossover between the Telethon, the talent, uh, the donors, and the Santa Barbara Writers Conference in Santa Barbara. It was just, it was part of the magic, uh -huh. you know, and, and that gets to the book that we wrote. So I started off with the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions, went and got experience in a variety of other things, but built these relationships over time with these incredible people, uh -huh. you know, writers and thinkers and doers and movers and shakers. Um, and it's funny because, you know, you, when you're doing the telethon, you know, you have the talent and everybody else, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but the talent, when you turn the cameras on, they're on and stay out of the way. That's yeah, their yeah, livelihood. True, true. That same person can be sitting in a workshop at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference with absolutely no ego, oh. no self-confidence, and raw and open and um, becomes yeah. part, of, becomes a human being and a part yeah. of that other family. It, it is a, it's a wonderful experience and hopefully yeah. we captured some of that in this book. 
Uh, I never thought of it in those terms. I never thought of those terms. Uh, but anyhow, I was so. But now, when did this is now, this book, which is what we're really talking about uh, primarily today, this book is just coming, just come off the press. Has now been available for maybe a couple of months, mm -hmm. but has has a long way to go. Uh, but. The idea of doing a remembrance of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference has come up a number of times. Uh, a number of people I, I know approached Mary and Barney to do a, the history of the of the conference, and it never happened. How did we uh, did suddenly uh, Mary uh, agree to this? Mary was waiting for me to come up with the idea. You think, you think that's it? No, I know that's what it is. Oh, and, I'm sure. Uh, and and that's because of the trust factor. Uh -huh. Because um, Mary wanted to tell the story. And, and look, if you this is half what I wrote and half of the scrap words that she Pictures, kept for 30 and 40 years. I could years. not believe the fact that Mary Conrad, who was one of the three authors, authors of this book, had kept all these photographs all these years amazing and we wanted she wanted to tell the story and what we when i came to her in june of after the writers conference of 2015 with june, matt june 25th two with, years ago okay. right with matthew palomary yeah. who's a workshop leader who's he's got third, 30 books third, in prints and, the third creator exactly um and i said you know the, the idea i proposed look mary it's time to tell the story not not to bemoan what's lost, but to honor what was and to show these young'uns and new writers what's possible. Not to recreate the Santa Barbara Writers Conference, but to show what writer, what a writing community can be. Because as I pointed out, you know, I've been so blessed to be able to know and associate with everyone, with Harry Ashmore we were talking about, or William F. Buckley, Ray Bradbury, you know, all through Paul the Lazarus. years, Paul Lazarus, well, well, I want to different, talk about different some of these disciplines people. and yeah. all of that, and um, and and we can do that again in in the 2017 and and going forward version if we know what's possible. Okay, all right, but okay, so so it was Mary. You convinced Mary that and there was she no should. convincing. It just took Matt down and said it's time. She said okay, and I said. So you started this two years. You yeah, did, we started in June. I think that August sixteenth was the day we sat down and started writing. And my career, you asked what I'm I've just, been doing. Yes. So what I've been doing is because I've been blessed to be a good writer. When I first came to the conference, I think I wrote three novels that, thank God, didn't get published because <laughs> I'd be dead. You know, because oh. well, just because of drug and alcoholism back oh, in the oh, day, oh. I would have. But um, but but I learned the craft from these masters, sure. right? So for the past thirty years, what I've been doing, and and you can check with just about anyone who's ever worked for me here in Santa Barbara, in Boston, in D.C., in the Bay Area, is I've mentored people writing, uh -huh. and I've always thought that that writers, it's a labor of love, and it's a profession, and and it's a it's a chronicling of the story of our times. Not big, so big on uh, you know the blockbuster ego of writers. So what I've done always is, if you look up anything that I've written, it's always in conjunction with somebody else. I don't mind doing the writing because that's what I can do. But will you, but, but but this had to be co-authored by the three of us because Matt was on the inside, being the workshop leader. A workshop leader, and, yeah, and okay, a student right. workshop award winner. Mary had been had taken the pictures and yeah, had Mary. chronicled it in a different way. And Mary had to be part. It. Exactly, that and then I wrote it by transcribing like it, all it, that material. It was great that. because we t so for a week to ten days out of every month for two years, Matt and I would show up at Mary's house. We in pajamas. If you came and visited us, you'd find us in pajamas. We'd be fed breakfast. I'd write. Matt would scan. Uh, Mary would take everything. She would read it through the night. We'd meet in the morning. We'd go over the material, and we that's how the book was written. It was a labor of love of all of us, and you know I would love to repeat the experience again. We will well, in the next volume. What, what he also is not saying is that then they also opened the doors to the rest of us who were, who were around to see if we had anything to add to it, or or to make sure that other things were covered. Um, and yeah. 
one of the 2000, I think it's 2000, 2001, right after Sparky died, one of the most poignant remembrances in here is what Lane Starrell wrote for, and I think she won an award for writing it, that she had a dream that she was walking the grounds of the Miramar. Oh, really? Yeah, Lane? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. It's right in the middle of the book, and, uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd encourage everyone to turn to that page and read it. The memories of, of um, you know, Sparky's minions following him to play tennis, See, but but another thing is, because uh, uh, I've skimmed it, I have not re read it, I can't memorize, I haven't memorized it, but the, the, fame, the, the world's worst opening sentence, oh, yeah. do, you have, do you have a lot of those in there? A lot. You do? There's a lot, some of the favorites, yes, the Lancing yeah, that, of the Boils, there, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, well, let me, let me bring myself into this at some point. Yes. I, I moved here, and in, in, uh, actually, uh, before I moved here, in 1988, I was still vice president of Bantam Books in New York City and got invited to uh, by Paul Lazarus to join the Writers' Conference. And I uh, had such a great time. Uh, and sure enough, the, the, at, at that point, I was thinking of retiring. And my big boss said, you need a couple of years, you, uh, you know, because if you're not going to stay in New York City, you need to calm down or whatever. Mm. So I got invited the second year to the Writers' Conference, came out here. And then I decided, since I was moving to California, why not go to a place where I knew people already? So, it was, so I, I was more interested in starting in 1988 mm -hmm. uh, in this book. This book actually starts in 1974. It starts in 72 when the idea came up, but yeah. the conference was in 74. So that, uh, so that uh, this is 30 years of, uh, of, of the conference. Uh, but now, to my mind, the, uh, I think the description of this book should be it's an atlas, it's an, al it's an almanac, it's something that everybody needs to have at some point or another because inside this, this voluminous uh, tome. tome is, for every year, is headlines, important headlines, important books that were published, all the prize winning, the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer Prize of every publication, uh, the best selling authors, a list of, of authors and their current best sellers each year for those 30 years. I could not believe that in one place you have all that information. You know, when, when, and I think you were uh, one of the skeptics, we, because we checked with people when we started to write it, and we said, we're going to write a history of the Conrads, and we're going to do it year by year, and everybody, Shelley Lowenkamp, you, Michael Larson, I mean, everyone that we contacted said, that's crazy. Um, how are you going to do it? But again, go back to remember the idea that I went to Mary with, wanted to show um, what it was like and what it could be. So, so, so it was important that each year the context of yeah. what of what society That's was going right. on, and yeah. for so many yeah. of those Absolutely. years, Santa yeah. Barbara was the center during the Reagan years. You know, with Rancho Del Cielo, yeah. the yeah, centers yeah. of power were true, here. True, true. So, uh, you know, Lou Cannon and and Sandy Von Oker, you know, interviewing people, um, the astrologer for the Reagans is is in here. You know, you get the astrologer. Absolutely, you get insights <laughs> into into what was going. Going on and and it has to be contextual because arguably we're which is my next book that we're living in similar kinds of times now yeah and we don't need to forego literature in fact that should be impetus I think for more writing and expression that's accessible to more and more people so we can get the context of the kind of world we're living in and what's possible but he, what, what he's he's also not saying but is what happened is that when we got to the Miramar, mm -hmm. or when they got to the Miramar, long before I got to the Miramar, it lended, its smallness lended itself to a kind of camaraderie that was beyond what a typical book and author, uh, a, a writer's conference can be. I mean, there, uh, there was that intermingling between the, the, the leading um, eight o'clock uh, author who was speaking today and all the people who were, were part of the audience. And there was, int uh, and you would learn insights from these famous authors on how to better your writing. I mean, just uh, telling you, right, you know, 
in that eight o'clock part while they were talking about their own their own uh, uh, history and their own successes and struggles. And I have one regret from this book, and that's that. Um, in the course of the research, we came across a tape, and if you're out there, I forget who did the tape, but there's an interview in 19. Uh, I want to say it was at the it was at the Miramar. Yeah. It's an interview with Barnaby and uh, um, Alex Haley, and it's done it's done right outside. If you remember the Miramar, the old conference hall. Yeah. So um, it's so there's the freeway on one side, the train tracks on the other side, pitted you know planted palm trees on asphalt, and um, Barney and Alex Haley being interviewed, and then people walking by, and you can hear the freeway, and you can hear you know the clutter. And you know, the fecundity of the, of, of the process that was going on. And they were almost quoting each other verbatim that there's nothing else like this where it was like coming home. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex at that point was struggling with what he, he I, called I, writer's still. box. And, but, but, you know, but he felt relaxed and home there. And I misplaced the tape. It's not <laughs> in here, but I know it exists. So if you filmed it out there and you have a copy, please get in touch with us and we'll put it in the next volume. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great, great, great. Uh, and there, and they had. Uh, in addition to Ray Bradbury, I have to admit that the book is, in a sense, a, a tribute to Ray to Ray Bradbury because God love him. He was he was here every year. He was and he was throwing himself into everything that went on, uh, and was a, such a great influence on on a number of rising writers uh, today. Uh, and not just Ray, but even but all of the eight o'clocks, all of the the authors, and they had. I mean, it's silly. It's silly for us to to enumerate or specify who who was here. But anybody mm -hmm. you could think of probably was here. And as a matter of fact, it's still being here. It's just interesting. I didn't realize that. I mean, this year uh, opening night is is Fanny Flag. That Fanny Flag. Practically was there almost every year, and she she admits that it was the writers' conference who really got her started uh, on her career. Oh, absolutely, pasty as she called herself when she pasty was pasty because um, her name was was Patricia. Um, the same as the actress, um, and she changed it to Fanny Flagg because when she uh, first went to Hollywood, they said you, Patricia Ryan, that uh. you couldn't uh, have the name of another actress. <laughs> so, so um, when she was growing up, she was dyslexic, and she used to write her name Pasty instead of Patsy. Oh, so that's a big part of her story uh -huh. and throughout her <laughs> books, and and which she you know readily shares. Um, she went to the conference. She likes to tell the story because she saw a flyer that Eudora Welty was going to be there. Yeah. Oh, she, that didn't, year? God. she didn't know that she she didn't know that she could um, pasty didn't know that she could um, sign up for one class. Or just one, just, just one, just to see yeah. Eudora. So she signed up for the whole thing. Oh. And then she didn't know that um, she had to do the assignments that Barnaby gave out. So she wrote a story which ended <coughs> up winning that year, which became her first novel, <coughs> and which, for which she received the award from Eudora Welty, and the rest is history. Oh, yeah. she's, she's wonderful, a dear uh -huh. friend um, to all of us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, she's, and, and she keeps coming through, and every year, I mean, even this year, she was, why me, you know, why me, uh, why? Because she's, she's, she's going to get the Ross McDonald. Donald Award, uh, which I just I made, didn't know. put in the order for. Great. Um, any, it's not but, a secret. <laughs> but the, but you don't. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think you have to have been no uh, a person who has been to the Writers Conference to appreciate everything that is here. That's why calling it an almanac, uh, I think, is closer to to what I feel the, the book is. It's got so much information. For everyone, regardless of what you know or knew about the Writers' Conference, and I think that that uh, you hinted that there will be a second. Uh, uh, sure. Book. Well, w the three co-authors wrote introductions, and in mine, and you said at the end. Go on. Yeah, say what. In mine, at the beginning, I said to follow up on your point, it's like having a seat at the Algonquin Circle in New York, and it really is because yeah, what yeah. we did was what I did was transcribed what what um, so many of the authors had to say, much of which appears in print nowhere else. Now, speaking of appeared in print, I keep on telling Susan Gilbranson, who wrote Collins, mm -hmm. practically her whole life is in that is, is in there, and 
Beverly uh, Jackson, Beverly Jackson, uh, Barney Branningham. Absolutely. I mean, all these people who have who have become columnists and whatever, and, and, and successful writers around here, Herb all, Cain. all had columns that, that throughout the whole all thirty years talking about the conference and what was new about it. Yeah, again, that goes back to my belief and my history of share the wealth. We, we do this as a community. I, I just don't believe there's any one savior writer of a time. It's, it's a conglomeration oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of all yeah, of us. Yeah. So at the beginning, so, so that speaks to your point of there's so much more here than just pictures. Is Go ahead and read and get the wisdom. There's things, the Countess of Romanov, who um, was um, a spy during World War II that Barney got out of prison. She tells her code name there, which even in her memoir, her publishers wouldn't let her put in oh, yeah. so you'll have to read to find out what her code name was when she was in the CIA at well, the end of the book um, the last word on it and our afterwards was Mary Conrad where go ahead and read it I'm paraphrasing but she says words to the effect that's another story and another volume of the history of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference oh, yeah. so yeah there's there's thing there's so much that isn't in here that we have research material that that I know I'd love to have, and uh -huh. I think my co-authors would like to produce the next volume. All right, now I know. I want to know what you're going to do with this. I mean, obviously, I know that I know there was there was uh, uh, at, at uh, Chaucer's there was a signing at Tecolote. At Tecolote, there was. Yeah, there uh, was. I so I'm currently um, looking for reviewers. Exactly. Uh, okay, let's talk that a second. Because because also that an obvious audience is going to be at the right the new writers right. conference with this year it starts on the 18th of June goes through the 23rd so at I assume that you're going to have a display we'll have or a display some we'll have a panel discussion after a showing of the related film that was directed the, the, by Lisa Angle. The Lisa Angle is do, uh, excuse did me, a film. directed by Matthew Palomary, produced by Lisa and Mary and myself. Oh, okay. It's really an homage to um, a, a lot of interviews, a lot of um, detailing the history and the relationships with a lot of familiar, friendly faces to folks in Santa Barbara, especially. Did you, did, did you use that? St I had uh, one of the first people I ever interviewed <laughs> here uh, was Barney, and I think I gave you that that. Um, Barney uh, Barney? Yes, no, Barney Conrad. Oh, Barney Conrad, right. And I wondered whether, because I wondered how you were, what other visuals you were going to use. I mean, this was a live interview like this. Yeah, there, there, some of that is, is in that there. In, is that some in, of that's in there. Of course, there. Lisa, Lisa would, have, would know about right. it. Right, and um, it's really told, if, from any perspective, it's Mary Conrad. So it's the film starts off with with Barney's voiceover and and then Mary telling the history of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference. Then oh. lots of interviews, everybody from Fanny Flagg and Gail Lenz and Chris Mitchum and um, on and on uh, and on people. So okay. Uh, so so that will be premiering at at the, at, at, at at the Writers Conference Friday, Sunday night, the yeah. same night as right. as giving uh, 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 the. Uh, Ross McDonald Award. Right, and then we'll, then we'll be sitting with Fanny signing copies of the book there. But then the 15 minutes, because as, as I remember from Lisa, it's 10, 15 minutes. Are there any other, because I know she tried for the, film, the Santa Barbara right. Film Festival, which you couldn't, but other local, there are still other film festivals that might. There are. I, I don't know if it's happened yet. I've been working in Oakland, California, but uh, Matt had entered it into the Ojai Film Festival and at least one other that I'm aware oh, of. And, good. and oh, I'm good. not sure. Okay. Uh, right. I haven't heard any updates on where it okay. is. So the film is going on. You asked me earlier off camera, um, one of the original ideas that I'd still like to follow up on because of the title, it makes it a little more um, challenging. But um, I want to be in contact with um, educational departments, with, with history and film and um, literary departments at colleges and universities uh -huh. that could use this. Um, some of the uh, wisdom of the masters uh -huh. from that, that we recorded. And so it's hearing from... Um, well, you know, I, Elmore I, Leonard from... I was the one that gave you the Elizabeth right, George. Right, from Elizabeth George. And it, there's, just, she, there's so many people that Gail yeah. Lynn's... Yeah, um, Gail's not coming this year, I heard, ultimately. Oh, she really? The last I heard she was, so she must have Unless changed. that changed. Unless yeah. that changed. Originally she was coming. Absolutely. And then she... Okay. Uh, it may not be Well, coming. life happens. Oh, yeah. um, but anyway, um, so to market this to um, departments at universities that can use as a text... 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's it's written. It's totally accessible. Um, like I said, oh, getting totally. back to the beginning, you know, you get an inside seat. You get to hear things that um, you can't hear any other place. Right, right, right. Because and, and I'm talking about names too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just talking about the literary situation. Uh, I mean, I had uh, I I brought Nick Dunn, Dominic Dunn, uh, uh, Nancy Holmes. The thing with yep. Nick was so wonderful because he talked to Barnaby about the days when they when they did television yes. in New York City. Yes, that's in I, there. Which I couldn't believe. So there's a lot of stuff. Also, remembrances of people of Ted Ted Berkman, yes. of Paul Lazarus, uh, people that I miss da daily. You know, one of the blessings that Matt and I had, and Mary, but Matt and I um, took it on the road and visited with a lot of the people who are in the book, contemporaries of yours that were workshop leaders that their health has kept them from being... Oh, like Abe, oh, Abe Polsky? Like Abe Polsky, and uh -huh. so we've gone and visited and given it to them. Oh, great. It's a oh, labor great. of love. It's been, it's, yeah, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh -huh. Couldn't have planned it better, my life better, to be able to be doing this kind of thing uh -huh. right now. Yeah, but you're not getting your money for it. You're not getting not paid yet. for it. Not yet. Not yet. But but we want to. We, uh, but I mean, I want this to sell, or yeah. I want the next one. If you're doing a sequel, yes, or whatever you want to call it, can we at least put in the copies that are still around something? You know, a teaser to wait to see. A, you know, volume two. You mean more than just the Mary quote at the end? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Or it's just maybe a sticker or something. I'm not saying stickers a good it's idea. Just, it's a, it's just a that's a, a good tease. marketing tease. It's yeah. a tease. I like that. We'll we'll take it. All right. We'll, we'll do it. Well, needless to say, I believe in this <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, even though I seem to be every time that I a photograph of me, I'm drinking. I think is you know, is one of me. At, at, that's not by accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry. I looks pretty good there. At the, uh, certainly, certainly in the days of. Of, of the the hotel and boy how i miss the hotel yeah. and boy how we it, it, it's reflected in here too whoever owned the hotel they were getting good plugs for it well you know and monty's done a great job in um you know in the in the bridging the gap from what used to be and him he is a student Right. Yes, and, yes, yeah. now and we didn't. The, I didn't, we didn't mention his father, Charlie Schultz, who's throughout the whole yeah, book also. Yes. And there's and remembrance who starts of him right in on there. the front cover. Right, right, right. And he's dedicated to him, Barney and and Ray Bradbury. But um, if the Santa Barbara conference can bloom into the new version of what a conference truly can be, then he's the right guy right now to hold that space for us to do. So we're hoping this will be a gumbo and a crawfish pie. Tastes so good to say, ooh, yeah, yeah. Hey, baby, don't you want to go to the Cajun dance in the Zydeco? Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie. Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie.